And up next, we are meeting with Derek Sage, who is the like head honcho, the owner, the the creator, the founder. Like, I don't know what word you use, Derek, but uh, he's the guy behind SOS Entertainment. Uh, Derek, I, I love I love how we met. Um, I I never am a person to take cold calls, but for some reason, it, it was like 2005, 2006. I picked up my office phone, and it was you just cold calling me. And I happen to need a DJ for homecoming in like two weeks. I can't even believe at this stage in my life that I didn't have a DJ two weeks out. <laughs> and I was like, hey, yeah, why don't you come do homecoming for us? And uh, so started the uh, the Derek and Jeff bromance. <laughs> there you go. Oh, man. 2015, that is like a serious throwback. Yeah, for real. <laughs> you just dated us big time, man. Uh, a little bit, a little bit, yes. Um, so tell us <clears throat> about SOS Entertainment, what you do for schools, uh, what you do just in general. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Well, thank you first off for doing this. It's really nice to be guys and uh, in this crazy digital world we're living in. It's nice to at least have a couple more face to faces um, and not have to cold call on people, you know, <laughs> uh, but that is a good testament to uh, why you got to just pick up the phone and reach out sometimes. So I'm glad we got to meet and I appreciate everything you're doing, man. Um, yeah. So SOS, I guess in short, um, since Jess, Jeff alluded, we've been around for quite some time uh, doing DJ, sound, lighting, entertainment, production-related services uh, for all sorts of clients, but um, have specialized in schools for uh, forever. I uh, started DJing when I was in sixth grade, and uh, between doing kids' birthday parties and then the middle school's dances, I uh, was very involved in my high school's dances and um, even had to DJ one of them when the DJ bailed last minute. So oh, nice. I had to tell my date, sorry, I'm not going to winter formal with you. I have to work. Um, <laughs> but yeah, shout out to Todd Aerosmith. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, that's kind of been the story for a long time. Like, sorry, honey, I have to work. I know everyone's going out tonight. Um so yeah, in a nutshell, we've uh, started DJing with that, and of course, as uh, as most things uh, do in life, became a little more involved and uh, we clarified what our mission was and reason for our existence as a business uh, under the context of um, working with students and uh, really came to love um, how ASB, and especially over the years, has evolved into more of a leadership-focused um, group and we became pretty um, pretty committed and and um, you know believing in the concept that ASB really is kind of that nucleus on campus for most cultural and like everything amazing you know so um, if we could work with these uh, leadership superhuman students that seemed like a pretty cool pretty cool gig to us so we of course do corporate events and weddings and Anytime someone needs some sound, lighting, staging, or entertainment work, we're, we're pretty game. We have a couple of different departments, um, especially in like the nonprofit and philanthropy world, um, doing their galas and, and stuff like that that are also very strong. But uh, I would have to say our strongest since the beginning has always been working with schools. Yeah, and I'll, I'll tell you, you, you talking about that, that leadership aspect, it, it was always cool working with you guys because you would send either you would come out or you'd send people from your your team to come out and actually do leadership lessons with my students, which was this, so it's kind of like a, a different aspect of what you see from a lot of entertainment companies. So that was a really cool, cool component of uh, what you've kind of included as part of your, your overall business plan. Um, speaking of business, this year has been weird and um, has been super hard, especially on your industry, the DJ and uh, event planning group. So how have you kind of coped? With COVID-19, like what have you kind of pivoted to do to, to help schools at this point? What can you provide for the rest of the school year? Yeah, wow, that is a big question. So <laughs> we have a couple more minutes. <laughs> okay, all right. I was like four questions in one. So yeah, <laughs> pandemic was just absolute insanity and fire drill, you know, for uh, for the event industry. Obviously, we were, I guess, in essence, kind of the first to go completely like stop doing all this big social gathering stuff. Stop it. Stop it. And and uh, remember, you know, very, very uh, clearly that week in March where like the first event canceled and then the second and then, you know, hundreds, um, hundreds of events essentially 
everything for the year canceled and it was supposed to be our biggest year ever. And, you know, we were at 30 full-time employees and multiple offices in California. We're doing a ton of stuff in Nevada. And um, yeah, that came to like a complete screeching halt. Uh, we were able to kind of pick up the pieces. We had to do layoffs. We've been, you know, selling off a lot of unnecessary equipment that we knew would just sit and collect us and vehicles that don't do well if you don't drive them for a whole year and that type of thing. Um, but we were able to try to pick, uh, pick up the pieces a little bit and, and um, yeah, just just do what, uh, what um, I would think good businesses are going to try to do and get innovative. That's one of our core values. Um, we've got these 12 company core values that we're really big on and like, guys, it's, you know, it's, it's time to buckle down and to get gritty and to innovate. We did do a handful of COVID friendly events this year, and it actually started, um, primarily with graduation last year. So we snuck in about 20 different COVID friendly graduations. So I love, love, of course, to talk about that a little bit here, but just to kind of finish uh, this, this question. Um, we've just been patiently waiting and trying to hibernate as much as possible and uh, a lot of uh, damage control and loss mitigation and just things that you don't really ever want to deal with or ever you could even imagine, you know, we're not special that everyone has suffered greatly from this. And uh, I'm sure one of the lessons we've all learned is it could be worse, right? So I hesitate to complain, but we, yeah, I've certainly had a very rough year and have lost 20 years of momentum and work and, and, you know, won't mention the financial losses, but that's pretty sketchy as well. Um, but we're feeling optimistic, you know, humans uh, have a way of bouncing back. It's what we do. So, and there's been a lot of silver lining and of course things could have been worse. So net net of it all, uh, we have to answer your question, been keeping busy. And for a while, uh, the job was just how to clear out a warehouse or how to sell a bunch of stuff or how to go through the decor department again and relabel everything or <laughs> whatever we could, whatever we could think to have our people do. So we still have our core key people. And uh, now we, we're seeing some light at, at the end of the tunnel here. So great. Yeah. And I do always love your optimism. That's, that's one of the, the character qualities about Derek Sage that uh, is, is always super amazing. Um, you did mention COVID-19 friendly events and you're doing a workshop on that on Wednesday. Uh, you want to touch just a little bit on, on kind of what that's going to look like? Yeah, absolutely. Super excited about that. And thank you for the platform. You guys have always been so gracious and uh, letting us kind of share what's in our heart and uh, hearts and, and, and minds. And, um, you know, going back to even presenting in your classroom, we didn't want to just be there to be like, what do you need from us? And <laughs> let's talk about this dance. Uh, you know, it felt like if we can dig a little deeper and understand things like core values and belief systems and just what makes people tick and, you know, understand a little bit about psychology and um, the obvious uh, outcome of, of COVID-19 in relation to the event world is that humans would be able to start doing the things again that humans need to do. And we need to socially gather and we need to celebrate um, students. We need to have events. It's just kind of what we do as humans, you know, and our, uh, when we're on our deathbed, we're not going to like think back of the times that we sat doing paperwork or in a DMV line. We're going to think of like a handful of things and all of them were pretty much events with a capital E, like it was a wedding or a this or a that, or even this like unexpected event. And um, I used to tell a story in a workshop about my cousin, this amazing kid, uh, his name's Johnny. <clears throat> and um Anyway, his, uh, his mom actually just passed away this week, and it's a story about him and his mom. Johnny has Down syndrome and, um, and just what events did for him, being able to go to dances in high school. And then people from leadership organizations that really helped him, and, you know, he won prom king and like his whole life just completely changed because of these miracles that can happen when people come together, right? And that's it. Miracles don't really happen when everyone stays locked in their rooms. And so you need people to come together so that nature can take its course and these beautiful things can happen. I met my wife at an event, you know, while I was working and uh, we have a baby on the way that should be here like in maybe less than seven days, maybe in five minutes. I don't know. I'm keeping my phone on extra loud. Um, <laughs> 
but yeah, in the workshop, we talk about, um, yeah, there's things we can't do, <clears throat> but there are, certainly is a lot that we can do. And, you know, what we can do, we should, what we should, what we can become, we should become. I've always felt that tragedy in life is potential and that, you know, something that could have been. And, and it's probably, it wasn't for some tragic reason, like we just didn't try or we weren't creative or we didn't reach out to get some resources and some ideas and some help. So we're just, yeah, like all of our workshops, we're just here to help share some ideas. And um, there are a lot of really, really innovative ASB and leadership classes that we work with. And we'd like to kind of take some of those secrets and share them if people haven't heard of how to pull a COVID friendly graduation or what do we do for our seniors of 2021? I mean, 2020 had it bad, but 2021 has had like 0, 0.0 anything for social events. Yeah, so, you know, don't cancel prom, don't cancel grad night. Uh, that's a terrible message to send our class of 2021 right now. Um, and, you know, you probably can't have the normal thing that you were gonna plan, but you could have a huge event in the parking lot. Uh, we have this really exciting uh, event that we've modeled and kind of suggest, uh, suggested list of items on a program that would make this event, if they have to stay in their cars, it could still be this really fun, amazing event, huge inflatable screens and lots of entertainment value. And that social piece, you know, the, the mental health is the buzzword. I'm sure that will be the buzzword of everyone's presentations. And it, it, it's important because it's real. That's the real. A lot of those on the docket this year, for sure. It's yeah. the, the big topic of the year, for sure. Um, all right, we, we've we gone very long on this interview, okay, which is sorry. great because, yeah. you know, it's always awesome catching up. So in very brief, the fun fun end questions here. Uh, favorite mixtape era memory for you, 80s, 90s music. You're a DJ. You've got to have 100,000 of them. So just give us your favorite. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, man, I'm going to, I sit in music all the time. And so when I think 80s, 90s, especially because I have... 3.9 kids right now I actually go to like movies so I was kind of preparing like man you know the gremlins and and just some of these iconic 80s movies princess bride and I'm, I'm having my kids watch all these instead of some of the new stuff so yeah I certainly loved making mixtapes and and um and, and all that jazz but I feel like the 80s movies were really iconic so those were just a couple of ours that we've been catching on online recently. Rad was this cool bicycle 80s flick and, oh and uh, yeah, just, <laughs> just all that that just made you a weirdo kid back in the 80s. Awesome. I'm an 80s baby, so yep, love it. All right, it. Derek. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Be sure to uh, visit Derek Sage in the SOS Entertainment booth in the virtual exhibit hall and uh, check out his workshop. If you miss it live on Wednesday, the recording will be available on the schedule. Thanks a lot, Derek. Awesome. Thank you so much. See you, Jeff.